You know, it seems like when we're younger, we have all types of conflicts and we can't get along, but it's as we get older mm-hmm. and our parents get older, when it almost kind of gets worse in mm-hmm. so many ways. And it can be so challenging because there are family dynamics exactly. involved, personalities, et cetera. So sometimes you need a little help to figure out how do you help resolve that conflict. We decided to talk to an expert. We have Bruce Kravitz. He is a technically a professional mediator, but but you like to call yourself a peacemaker. Yes. I'd like to use the term peacemaker because it puts a lot more people at ease. And frankly, I'm an idealist and that's what I do. Help resolve conflicts and bring peace to people's lives. Yeah. You know, when we are working with our siblings, trying to figure out maybe what the best care is for our parents, or maybe our parents don't agree with some of the things that we think they should do, you know, what are the most common um, situations that you find? Well, it often has to do with issues relating to the care, well-being, or property of a senior. So you can have siblings, adult siblings, arguing about what's the best care for mom and dad. Mm -hmm. You can have um, the siblings arguing with the elder about what's appropriate, what's safe. Everybody's worried about money. You can also have families that are in arguments with other kind of providers like doctors or facilities where the senior lives. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of conflicts that just basically related to life and aging. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seems like one of the biggest that we see in our group is an elder, older mom or dad, or maybe both, who say, I don't want to get out of my house. I don't want to leave this house. I'm not going into independent living or assisted living or any other place. And there's conflict and it's like that. And no, nobody's happy. Absolutely. And, and, you know, mom or dad states their position. I want to die in my house. Mm-hmm. I want my independence. I want to keep on living the way I've always lived. And there's no reason for you to try to try to make it different. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the adult kids are, are concerned about mom or dad's safety. Yeah. Maybe they're concerned about if there's caregivers being brought in, what's the cost. Mm-hmm. Um, so people all have valid concerns. It's just that um, they're coming at it from different positions. Yeah. And the so where do you is, start with yeah. that? Where do you start? Ed? <laughs> okay. So you'd ask mom, what's really important to you? Describe your life that is perfect and, and get them away. Not so much of, I want to be in my home, but what is it about living in your home that you really like? Well, I can sleep as late as I want. I can do this when I want. I have my own room. Um, I can have my pets. Um, I can have friends over, you know, um, they may not state it, but they can say things. You, you can understand things like, I don't, I don't want to move right now. Change is a big deal. Mm-hmm. And the adult kids can say things like, um, okay, I understand that. I hear all those things. I'm concerned about your safety because you're there all alone. I'm concerned about you um, not having socialization, not having many people around you or things to do. Maybe I'm concerned about the cost, upkeep of the house. Um, So these are all valid things. And as the as the mediator or neutral third party or even as one of the the people involved try to figure out try to get everybody figuring out ways that might satisfy a little bit of everybody's needs Mm -hmm. don't go for a home run Mm -hmm. if you don't have to okay so it could be how about if we bring some help in a few days a week to help you Mm -hmm. how about if we get some volunteers to call you How about if we figure out a way to get you involved in some activities outside of the house and you can still live in the house for a while? Mm -hmm. Um, And it might be a phased approach rather than the crisis. And we have to do something and we have to do something now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, there's a reason why we call our group parenting aging parents, because we feel like we're parenting them. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes I I feel like we, we act like we're parenting our old five-year-old or seven-year-old or 10-year-old and telling them what to do. No, this that's the way it has to be. You only do it that way. I, I'm the parent. You're going to do it that way. But we, sometimes we tend to do that with mom or dad. Like, no, you have to do this. And they rebel and they they don't like that. And it, it's it's almost a mind frame that we have to get into as, mm-hmm. as the adult children and treat our parents, I'd say with more respect, but 
but treat them in a certain way and, and not different, not force them. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Every human being, regardless of their age, is deliciously unique. Yeah. They've got their own upbringing, their own experiences, their own values, their own beliefs. And whether you're an adult child or a third party, it's not respectful to come in and demand that somebody does something different. You may have the legal authority, you may have economic power, but nobody, whether you're an elderly parent or a sibling, mm -hmm. nobody wants to be treated disrespectfully. Mm -hmm. The more you listen and understand and then restate what you think is the real key things to them and make sure that they actually are being heard mm -hmm. and people loosen up a little bit, especially if there's a little bit of to and fro and a little bit of, you know what? I never understood how important it was to you that you had your own room and you could lock the door. Mm. You know what? You're exactly right. And if one person starts to agree, there's a thing about human nature. Another person will then agree and reciprocally. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think another issue that we hear a lot about is the siblings, especially when it comes to, you know, the care of the parents, should they stay in their home? Should we, should they move to an independent living? And I think it becomes, you know, obviously when you have siblings that all get along and, and, and are in agreement, unfortunately we have both been in that situation. So we've, that's been, we've been very fortunate that when you're all on the same page, it just makes taking care or helping your parents a whole lot easier. But what do you, you know, how do you handle it when it's the siblings really sort of disagreeing because you know, they're, they're still your sibling at the end of the day. And when one just, you know, decides to, okay, well, I'm out because I don't like what you, I don't like what you're doing. It really creates a lot of challenges and, and long-term effects. Yeah. You're absolutely right, Kim. When there's a conflict uh, in a relationship like business consumer, somehow you resolve it, you go on your way and you never see each other, you never do business again. But when it's a conflict related to a relationship from blood or family or long-term friendship or colleague, those relationships have been there a long, long time. There's a lot of history and baggage. Mm -hmm. So it makes it even more um, difficult to try to proactively move forward to find ways that work for everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get into a lot of psychology and the background of all the family relationships. Um, you'll have some people who the finances is really important to them. They don't want mom to run out of money. Um, some what's important to them is they want mom's quality of life, her socialization, her health care. Um, you have some um, family members that have kind of always been absent. They don't even want to play in the game. Mm -hmm. You've had some family members who, Maybe they're the oldest child or they're the overachiever and they want to take control because that's been their position. Mm -hmm. So all these longstanding family dynamics and histories comes right out when there's a conflict. Yeah. And um, whether you're the peacemaker or just a member of the conflict, try to figure out what role everybody's playing mm -hmm. and try to figure out ways that there's solutions that make that family member feel heard. Mm -hmm. and even feel appreciated and feel thanked. Mm -hmm. you, you want to figure out ways that everybody feels like they're contributing. Mm -hmm. Everybody feels like they're valued. Everybody feels like they're heard. Mm -hmm. And there's really no room for my way or the highway. The, you know, the, the crash and burn thing is just, um, it's very disruptive. It doesn't help anything. Unfortunately, there's some ways, some people that make their way through the world that way, using their official or unofficial power to get their way. And they leave in it a wake of unhappiness and destruction. And there's other people who are basically all even put aside my needs mm -hmm. to a certain extent to allow the other people to get what they want. Mm -hmm. And you have all the extremes or you have all the variations in the middle. It, well, I wonder too, does it sometimes even, is it often maybe the out of town sibling or child? Is it the, you know, is it the one that maybe, again, because of family dynamics, maybe they just sort of feel like they have their feelings hurt because they weren't asked 
for some, for input. I mean, so you, I, I feel like that's where some of the challenges come is that sometimes it might not even be the issue that's where should the people, you know, where should, where should our parents live a bit more because you didn't ask my opinion. And so now my feelings are hurt. And so now I'm going to take it out this way. And then I'm just going to be out because I, I think that oftentimes too, if it's the, the child who's not around the parent as much, they don't necessarily see the decline or the challenges like the child who lives out of town. Absolutely right. The person, the sibling who lives far away, they're just by definition not as much involved in the day to day. They don't maybe see the decline. They're not spending the hours and hours mm -hmm. with mom or dad doing all the appointments, whatever. Mm -hmm. So they feel kind of left out. They come for a visit. Maybe they don't really understand the complete situation. Mm -hmm. They start doing things without even consulting the other siblings mm -hmm. or even maybe even not even asking the parent, is this what they want? Mm -hmm. I mean, I have an example. My, my mom's here in town. She's at a facility. Um, I visit her quite often. Now we're on the phone a lot rather than me personally going. My brother and I, we get along great. Mm -hmm. He said once a month, he's going to come in and visit mom. So he doesn't feel so left out in addition to his phone calls once a week. Well, he came into town. He took her out shopping. I didn't know. He went and bought her a coffee maker for her room because <laughs> mom kept wanting to have a coffee maker for many months. And I know it's not a good idea because she spills it. She leaves it on. She makes a mess. Mm -hmm. There's coffee in her facility everywhere. And also it was a reason for her not to get out of her room. She could mm -hmm. just drink coffee and eat yogurt and nuts. And, you know, mm -hmm. my brother didn't really know that. Mm -hmm. So my mother's very smart. When they went out shopping, she said, <laughs> you Mr. Coffee. And, you know, my brother was very proud. Oh, we had a great time. I bought mom a coffee maker. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> at this point, I'm not going to take the coffee maker away. Right. And it wasn't long before she spilled coffee all over herself in her easy chair. Mm -hmm. and she's making a mess in the room and the facility's calling me. Bruce, uh, we really don't like the idea that your mom is a coffee maker in your room. Some residents can handle it, but you know, with your mom, there's safety issues and it's a mess. So yeah, you know, bless, bless his heart. My brother tried to do the best he could, but it ended up not really being useful. So I'm not mad at my brother. I just said, Oh, you didn't know. Yeah. You know, we're going to take away the coffee maker. So and, yeah. Yeah. So do we, do we need to just like plan a family meeting? I mean, it, it, where do we start with some of these things to try to help make sure that we're all on the same page so that we're not well, acting in, 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 in a situation like that? Like, oh my gosh, you shouldn't have bought the coffee maker. Well, I didn't know, and, blah, blah, blah. Every, you know? every family has different dynamics. So every, everyone's going right. to be different. And of course you're going to have, well, should we get mediation? Should we get hire an attorney to be involved? Should we sue each other? There, there are lots right. of things, but it seems like the first thing you should do is talk. Absolutely. Absolutely. Plan if you can, communicate, talk about all the issues you think you need to have covered. Mm -hmm. Ask other people what are the issues that they need to have covered, but keep it going. Mm -hmm. Have monthly meetings or conference calls or, you know, there's all sorts of Internet based tools based mm -hmm. tools where you can, mm -hmm. you know, do things. Um, but the communication, no secrets. Mm -hmm. It should be, you know, as much as useful, people should be sharing things. And um, what do you do, though, when you just have hit an impasse? And there is we've we've talked it, this out, we've discussed it. And I'm, you know, I'm digging my heels in. My sibling is digging their heels in and we are or, my, or our parent is digging their heels in and we just we're not getting to a resolution. If the family members themselves can't resolve the conflict. And, and, and frankly, it's really hard sometimes because you're, you're part of the conflict. It's hard for you to have, have be seen as neutral and help it. Sometimes you can go to a trusted family friend or clergyman, maybe a doctor, maybe somebody you trust, hopefully somebody who actually understands conflict resolution, who understands or can learn about the, the interests of the people. Um, if that doesn't work, and it's always worth a try. You can go hire somebody like a mediator or peacemaker. You, unfortunately, many people will turn to the legal system, which is unfortunately very divisive and expensive. Mm -hmm. But that's another option of making a decision. Mm -hmm. It may not always preserve the relationships. Right. Yeah. And so try 
try reach out to people that you think might be good peacemakers who might be seen as neutral. Mm -hmm. That's why bringing somebody in who's trained in conflict resolution, mm -hmm. who knows none of the parties, they're already starting an advantage. Right. If you bring a family friend or, or a clergy or something, there's always a feeling that he was on that side or mm -hmm. her side. Yeah, yeah. You've got all that history and yeah. Uh, yeah. You, right. you, you've got to remember the word compromise because if you win 100%, chances are it's going to damage the relationship, whether it's with a sibling or with your parents. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Can't yeah. we all just get along? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so simple, right? But it, but yeah, first, first start, first step is talking through it and really trying to, I like what you said, which is really, um, seeking to understand what it is about their position and why they feel so strongly about what, why, what they believe so that you can hopefully understand, because it may not be exactly the reasons that you think. Right. See the other person's point of view. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So when we talked about having conversations, the real key thing is getting everybody taking turns to listen, mm -hmm. to right. absolutely listen to each other and to even restate what you heard to make sure you got it right and you didn't miss anything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's a key point because often what we what we hear because of emotions is not what they actually said or what they intended. Yeah, absolutely. And and a lot of times when I'm doing a, a mediation, the first 30 minutes or hours, everybody just getting whatever they want off their chest. Mm -hmm. Frankly, nobody is listening. <laughs> They're all talking. Exactly. And then once everybody's been heard, then the mediator goes, OK, so let me see if I understand what the nature of the conflict is about mm -hmm. and they may restate the problem. Mm -hmm. And then you start getting people working together. Oh, this, this, this dumb guy in the middle doesn't quite understand our family. We're quite unique. Mm -hmm. Right. And you use a little humor and a little um, hope and compassion to say, you're right. You're unique. Every family's different. Yeah. 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 Great tips. Bruce Kravitz. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. This is a topic that we could talk a whole lot about, yeah. but I think that really, while it sounds so simple, which is having the conversations, but I think that for many of us that are conflict diverse, we'd rather not have those conversations, yeah. but it just, it, it just shows the importance of being able to, to do that and yeah. having, having to start those and trying to feel like people can be heard because mm -hmm. I think that's so important too. Yeah. So communicate, but especially listen. Yeah. And we're listening to you. If you have any topics you'd like us to talk about with an expert, let us know. Parenting Aging Parents.